This program was made possible in part by the Institute for Journalism and Natural Resources and viewers like you. Gnalchish, hawa, thank you. Kiksadi have lived, we have had our home here in Shitka for thousands of years. I'm always so grateful to my ancestors for coming here. When the spring comes, when the spring finally gets here, there is nothing there's really nothing like Shitka, like Sitka Sound, like everyone, all of the animals are waking up, the bears are coming back, the, the plants are starting to, to come out, and it's just always been such a joyful part of, of our year. It's the beginning of our subsistence, it's the herring eggs, and there's really no way to explain what it's like here. Yeah, the trees are anchored up in the spawning habitat and you anchor them up just right so the tree floats off the bottom. And so when we pull the trees too, we look for the best spawn in them and that's what we harvest. And then we leave the rest and let it hatch. And as long as you leave about a third or so of the tree or a third or so of the eggs in general, they'll come back year after year. My name is Steve Johnson. <laughs> And Sitka is one of the homeland territories of the Kiksadi people. And for tens of thousands of years, we stewarded it and took care of its resources and its people and its animals. And it provided for us and took care of us. fishery is a very, it's really unique in that it really, the row itself only goes to Japan and then um, the, 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 the bodies do go to a, a smaller food market and maybe China and Korea and stuff like that and some fertilizer. So, or fish meal, fish meal. Big fat belly, so. But that's all what it's about right there. Perfect stain. Then they, uh, that's, yeah, these are a lot of females holding out. Um, I mean, they're all, it's just, yeah, this is unbelievably good. Yeah, found one for you. Male. But yeah, it's hard to believe that that's what, the, you know, the Japanese just hold go it. crazy. You, you should duck there. Good evening, it's 518 and you are listening to All Things Considered here on Raven Radio, KCAW. 
Sitka. Right now it's 46 degrees outside with overcast skies. I'm Catherine Rose with Raven News for Monday, March 28th, 2022. The first herring spawn was observed over the weekend in Sitka Sound. The Sitka Sound Sacro herring fishery opened on Saturday. Sainers landed an estimated oh, 450 oh, oh. tons. Oh yeah, the grapple. We're gonna let these ones spawn. Mm -hmm. The sooner we get them back, the more the better. Okay. All right. Bear claws. Bear claws. Okay, we're coming back with our first little load of herring eggs. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Yay, Lee. Okay, here you go. Huh? Oh, thank you. Mm. This is this was work today, that's for sure. Right. You know, because I wanted to bring them back so they were ready to go, and I think we got—I don't know—but I think we got the first herring eggs that I've seen no, so far. No, you better not post. No, <laughs> you better not post it on social media. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. I should tell you how to and we Kiksadi women are known as the herring ladies. My family, basically, herring eggs equals springtime. I, I definitely don't want to find out what spring would be like without herring eggs. I don't think anybody does. Thank you very much. I'm Marcel Guicho, saying thank you to our, our brothers and sisters in Sitka who have shared the herring roll with us for almost my total lifetime. You know, it, years ago, when we were younger, that uh, you know, herring was available almost all throughout Southeast. But because of the the uh, herring saning, things have changed drastically. So I'm I'm uh, happy to be here, and uh, and I hope that will prevail. Thank you. Cookies. And some of my earliest memories are of herring in places where they no longer are, and it's very hard to ignore when you see a fish somewhere and then it never comes back. And according to Fish and Game, that didn't happen. And so, you know, I feel like it's incumbent upon all of us to say something and to do what we can to protect what little we have left. And as everybody knows, I mean, it's not just part of our food and our nutrition, but it's very much a part of who we are. And so that's why I'm here, and that's why I'm doing what I can. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak on this very important issue. We used to get boxes 
big boxes of herring sent to us. We don't get that anymore. One does not need to be a rocket scientist. And while there may be more fish in front of Sitka this year, you have to look at the bigger picture, and the bigger picture says there's less. Because right now the fear is like all of the other fisheries that were managed the same way, is that it's going to collapse. And there's a very real possibility of that happening based on what we've seen in other areas close to us. So there's certainly something to be said for indigenous knowledge. Is it, is it your opinion that the data and that, that the department is providing us is not telling the full story as far as uh, whether there's a legitimate cons conservation concern? Because surely you, you probably wouldn't you probably wouldn't disagree with me that the data we watched this morning doesn't is not consistent with much of what the indigenous um, practitioners see. And I'm just curious for your take on it. It's it's always interesting when I um, hear the state biologists say that um, you know the the herring the, the biomass uh, the herring is population is healthy here and abundant. We don't see that as abundance. And when our people have to go further and look longer for herring eggs, we don't see that abundance. The abundance that the fishery sees is completely different than the abundance for herring eggs. I think we all should feel blessed that we're experiencing such an amazing biomass. Sitka is truly tremendous. Kodiak is beyond belief. So um, I, I know it. I, I think it would really be horrible that you know here you are, especially like say the people from Huna and Cake and and the villages throughout Southeast Alaska. Um, if you can't get fish right out your doorstep anymore, I mean that's that's a real problem. I don't know what the answer is to that. Persecuted commercially. Yeah. Like, where did all the other herring go in Southeast? And, and I know no one can answer it, but I'd yeah. like to hear your perspective on that. It's not the fault of the commercial fishery here in Sitka by any stretch. And I don't believe it's the fault of the fish and game. I mean, you have all these fisheries that used to exist and now don't. And you can't tell me that that's not a result of management at some point, you know? But these are all the things that people have witnessed within their own lifetimes. And that corroborates what we've been saying for since statehood. That look, these things are on the decline. There's a lot of reasons why these things happen. And we don't understand what those are. And we need to. You know, there were some kids from Ketchikan that I talked to this spring, and I gave a presentation on herring, and they had no idea that herring existed around Ketchikan and that they used to spawn there. And the kids just were astonished that these things used to happen there, and they wanted to know why they didn't. And nobody had a good answer for them. And I just... I sincerely hope that that's not what my story is going to become. I have this very real fear that we could be the last generation that does this. And, you know, it's, it's a David versus Goliath battle. I mean, you have this this cultural practice and tradition that's stacked up against a multi-million dollar industry. Is it diminished and declined in other areas in Southeast Alaska? Absolutely. But this particular Sitka stock, there's no way that you can scientifically say that it's ecologically unstable. This is an insane amount of volume up here, guys. This is just like Cook Inlet, super dense. I mean, it's ridiculous how much fish is up in here. The current is just flying, but still, yeah, this is truly awesome up here. I'm gonna go up in this hole that's a little bit out of the current.
know, the buffalo hunters had had several missions, but one of them was to destroy the food source of the indigenous people. And I don't think that I don't think that the industry has a willful desire to do that, but I definitely think there's a certain amount of negligence to it. And this year was the first year that I saw a fishing game close an area because it had subsistence sets in it. And that to me was just phenomenal. Just got a report of uh, some subsistence set uh, just uh, north of Point Brown. So the area within 200 yards of mean high tide mark will be closed to commercial fishing. That's the first time I've ever heard him say that, that they would actually close areas around branches. So, and then a guy just, apparently we had the radio down, but a guy just got on the radio and said that, that he had just placed some branches there, so please don't fish near there, which nobody's ever said that before either. So that shows you kind of the level, the change that's kind of gone on here. It's kind of interesting. So I think you could say, yes, herring fisheries were overfished prior to statehood. But then since statehood, it's been the goal of the state to rebound the fisheries, um, have them at a sustainable, harvestable level, both for nature and human consumption. And I think they've done that. I believe it's the finest managed fishery in the state. I mean, this particular fishery. There's, like I explained, there's no other fishery that goes to the length or the depth or the care that they do here. So I'm 60, I'll be 60 this year. I spend, I fish about nine, 10 months out of the year. So I spend a lot of time on the ocean and I love it. And I want to pass that heritage. Both my wife's fish with me, both my children fish with me. I want them to be able to participate. And for now, we have healthy ocean conditions. But no, I've seen a steady increase in water temperature throughout my career. I've steady, seen a steady decline in seabirds throughout my career. I think the long-term future is grim. I mean, anybody that doesn't believe in climate change or global warming has got something wrong with them. I'm sorry, I'm just, it's, just, it's just ludicrous. So I think unfortunately what we're gonna see is we're gonna need to see instability, radical, more radical ups and downs. But, so, so I know what you're saying. So do we rack right now and not fish just because the future is, is bad? I don't know that, what good would that do? So we're, while we're enjoying this, this tremendous boom in herring right now, um, I think inevitably it's gonna decline. I think inevitably salmon stocks are gonna decline because of overall oceanic conditions. You know, hopefully that's in the far future, but it's gonna happen and there's no stopping it. I'm sorry, you know, with what's going on on the planet, with the ever increasing human population, with all the stresses on the planet, the ocean is gonna be the first to go. I do not want to say that, oh, you know, with global warming, it's all going to be over. With climate change, it's all going to be over anyway soon. It's like, I can't. I think of my ancestors who fought for me against great odds against the Russians. I think of my granddaughters and say how I don't have that right. I don't have that privilege to say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do this. And I really don't think that anybody does. We are not separate. We're not separate from each other. We're not separate from our environment. It's a part of us. And we need to take that responsibility seriously. Yeah, it was. 
just that. It seems like we always have to struggle to just just exist, just to define, just to have our way of life, you know, to do these things that we've always done, that our parents have done. And it's like I've never, I've never known it to be without a fight. And no matter what we do, each generation picks up the sword. And now it's mine. That's how I became part of Board of Fish and things. I feel like now there are new, a lot of new people, a lot of new faces, and a lot of younger people who don't necessarily hold the same ideals of, you know, cut, kill, dig, drill, no matter what. I feel like, I feel like as these things continue, they are going to get better. And I feel like there's going to be more, more talk and more collaboration. I mean, I saw, I saw board members of the Board of Fish talk about, you know, wanting to know about subsistence practices and things, which is not something I've heard much before. You know, for tens of thousands of years, people lived here and survived and prospered. And I think now that people see that a little more, we don't have to fight as much, but it does seem to be never ending. You know, I'm doing and many other people are doing everything diplomatically and as efficiently as possible to protect this little bit of way of life that we have left. This is one of the last unbroken cultural practices that we have here. And our, our ceremonies, our identity, our moms, aunties, sisters. These things are so important to us on so many levels that without them, a big part of us is missing. You know, it's like losing a parent. You know, part of you goes away and it doesn't come back. And you think about it so often and how it's impacted your life and how it's become part of your life. But you can't go back. And you can't bring them back to life. And if that's what happens to our herring, then I don't know. I hope I don't get to know. About 50 pounds, let they see. Yeah, so, so this is like, these are eggs that are going back to our community of our inland Tlingit. And um, we've never, it's been so long since we've had this, like, like some of our people, we have family down here, right? And we're, we're from, um, we're from up, up north and we have this, we, we rarely get this food, eh? It's, it's, so, it's so precious to us. So it's just, uh, these, lo these little herrings have, brought us together, you know. Okay, he's got a big bag. You gonna come over here? We're gonna put this one in your bag, okay? Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah. <laughs> I'm Rosemary White. I was raised in Tutatuliak, which is on the Cusco Quim. My parents still live up north and I try to send them a box every year. And so because they share them with all our family at home. My hope for the future is that we have more light than shadows. We have more sun than darkness that we go through this difficult time in the world together and that we use our voices and our strength to protect the sacred and our elders see us working really hard to protect the herring and I hope that they can rest with a little bit of peace that everything's going to be okay and that this joy is secure that we have when we have herring eggs with our families.
This program was made possible in part by the Institute for Journalism and Natural Resources and viewers like you. Thank you.